Don't worry about the past. Don't lament about the past. Don't worry about the future. Hearing one, even one mantra is wonderful. If you can practice these five keys, you're on, the, you're on, you're on your way. Okay, now he gives more, what we say, points about the, the mind and how the mind will try to cheat us in so many. So the sixth key is neglect the mind. So what's the difference between bringing the mind back and neglecting the mind? They're somewhat similar, but there's a slight difference. And what is that neglect the mind? If you want to chant good japa, you have to learn not to think about anything else. Hmm. Prabhupada makes one statement. Here, I'll read it. This is not the statement. This is not the this is not the International Society for Mind Neglect. Mind neglect is, an ultimate pur is the ultimate purpose of the focus of Buddhism. Those who practice vipassana meditation, for example, try to experience their sense stimulation as separate from the mind's interpretation of those experiences. So the this, the mind's, you're watching your mind go through all these different thoughts. Eradicating their interpretations, they believe, will remove the essential experience of human suffering. Vipassana adherents and others of similar past therefore simply observe the mind, slowing it down and ultimately trying to stop it from interacting with sense perception. Observing the mind does not do, observing the mind does quiet it, and when it is quieted, the mind reverts to its natural state of the mode of goodness. So if you're connected with the mind, it's going to take you. Observing the mind allows you to sit back and see the thoughts and don't identify it or release the thoughts like that. I mean, the mind just, the thoughts are coming and, and just dismiss them, that's all. They're not important. But the mind will say, this is important. You've got to think of this now. This is important now. You forgot to do this. You forgot to do that. You should be doing this. You have this duty. So many things. It will take you on a roller coaster of seemingly important things which will divert your attention away from the sound of Krishna's name. So learn how to neglect the mind. And Prabhupada gives, he states one verse here. Um, this is from, there is one easy way, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, um, uh, 5, 11, 17. This is from the purport. There is one easy weapon with which the mind can be conquered. It's called neglect. Neglect. The mind is always telling us, do this or that. Therefore, we have to, should be very expert in disobeying the mind's orders. Gradually, the mind should be trained to obey the orders of the soul. It's not that one should obey the orders of the mind. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to say that to control the mind, one should beat it with shoes many times just after awakening and again before going to sleep. And this way one can control the mind. This is the instruction of all the Shastras. If one does not do so, one is doomed to follow the dictations of the mind. So that's from Srimad Bhagavatam. So what does it mean to beat the mind? Sometimes you have to kind of like make a deal with your mind. Oh mind, I grasp your feet and beg you with sweet words. Please throw away all your pride and develop intense extraordinary love for my spiritual master. For Rajabhumi, for the people of Raj, for the Vaishnavas, for the Brahmins, for the Gayatri Mantra, for the Holy Name, and for the transcendental shelter that is the youthful couple of Raj. Pride sits in the mind, the ever-present representative of false ego. But pride can be conquered by offering oneself wholly as the affectionate service of the spiritual master and of the holy persons, places, and things mentioned in this verse. So you, sometimes you have to make a deal with your mind. My dear mind, I know you have your program, but I have my program. And actually my program is better than your program because it's for your benefit also.
But still you will not listen. So let's make a deal. <laughs> so you tell the mind, I'll promise later, I'll let you do whatever you want, but for now just chant Hare Krishna. So what you're doing is you're lying to your mind. You don't really say that. You're not, you're not, you're not going to let him do what he wants later. But he believes you. And so he'll say, all right, I surrender now. <laughs> but let, remember, you have to keep your promise. Yes, I'll keep my promise. <laughs> there's you and there's your mind. Remember, there's two people. It's, they're not the same. You are not your mind. Your mind is a, what we say... It's part of the subtle body, which is part of the material body, and it's the composite of all desires and activities for many lifetimes. And the mind has a program he wants to keep the false ego going. He, he is the servant of the false ego in the mind. So the mind wants to somehow or other keep the false ego happy by fulfilling the demands of the false ego. That's all. But you want to engage your mind in hearing the sound of Krishna's name. So when thoughts come, just learn how to neglect them. That's all. Let them go. That's all. They're not important. It's hard to do that. It's hard to do that. Because the mind will continually come up with reasons why you should be thinking about other things. <laughs> like that. But bring it back. Nischaliti uh, astiram, constantly bring the restless mind back. It wanders, bring it back, wanders, bring it back. But how do you bring it back? Here's the key, listen to one mantra. There's the key again. It's not like you can bring it back just by pulling it back. You have to re-engage it in the sound of Krishna's name. So again, slow down. Go to one mantra. You'll find that when you're not chanting attentively, you're chanting fast. You're chanting fast and your mind is somewhere else. And then you realize, I'm not hearing anything. Okay, slow down. And again here, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And at that point, then one mantra, Again, another mantra, a mantra, mantra. So as you, the mind is again refocusing on Krishna's name. So that's the, um, is it fifth key, sixth key? Sixth key is neglect the mind. Okay. We can speak a lot about that one, but I'll leave that one open for questions. The seventh key is very important. Trinata peace Sunichena. Humility. One cannot simply conquer Krishna by your determination to chant. One has to chant in a, me, in a mood of submission to the Lord. Humility is mentioned throughout the scriptures as the quality that attracts Krishna's attention. So without humility, one cannot do anything in spiritual life, especially chanting. It's foremost in the practice of chanting. What does it mean to be humble? To be in a position of calling for Krishna's mercy. So chanting really means that I, it's not that I'm going to bring Krishna by my mantra techniques. I'm neglecting the mind. I'm doing my one mantra. I stated my determination. I'm fixed. I got my sacred space. Everything is there. But now the results are bound to come. No. One has to be humble. <laughs> One has to be begging for the mercy of the Lord. One has to be in a position of calling. And Srila Prabhupada used to emphasize that Hare is coming from the word Hara. Hara is Radharani, but Hare is when you call. So it's called the vocative. So when you're chanting, you're calling. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. It's a call. So in your heart, you're actually calling. You're beseeching the Lord to appear in His name, to come and associate with you through the, the sound of His name. So that's humility. So it's in, we're in the mood of a beggar. Not like, I'm going to conquer Krishna by chanting His name. <laughs> 